Hello and good morning, Miles here. And my video today, I want to show you this little generator that I've put together. It's a, a DC generator, a low voltage DC generator. So in that way, it differs from your, your average uh, AC uh, generator that you can buy in uh, hardware stores. This engine, it's a Honda, a genuine Honda, not a Chinese ripoff, uh, Honda GX160 engine. Uh, these things get used for all kinds of things, everything from uh, uh, portable generators to go-karts, lawnmowers, uh, pressure washers. If you look on this side, this is where the, the dynamo is. This is actually a motor off a off a Flymo. I only paid five pounds for it. I actually bought two. It's very sturdy looking. It's got lovely mounting flanges on the front. It's a, it's a strong, well-made motor and for the money you can't really go wrong. Uh, it tends to make about 15 volts at the, the idle speed I've set it at. You'll see in terms of transmission, it's very simple. Uh, I've not done it direct drive, I've done it uh, with a belt. It's slightly up gears because this one's bigger and this one's smaller. I find that's a good ratio. The dynamo I've mounted onto a, a bit of L bar that I've got, a bit of, um, a bit of aluminium. I've left a, a blank area here and the reason for that is at some point I'd like to put a couple of gauges like volts and amps and maybe a breaker switch, something like that. One thing I'd like to point out by way of a disclaimer is uh, an obvious safety feature that's missing on this generator. Uh, you can see the exposed belt here. Um, that's pretty hazardous if you put your finger in that when it's running. It's obviously spinning very fast. So what you would do with something like this, and I haven't built mine yet, is put a, like a, some kind of cover over it. I've not put one on this because I want to show you it running. Um, it wouldn't be so obvious how it all worked with a cage over it, so uh, that's, that's why it's not been done yet. Uh, you'll see to mount the uh, the engine and the uh, the dynamo I've used like one of these um, steps you can get from a hardware store, home improvement store. Actually makes quite a good base for a generator, gives you good access all the way around. If you buy a commercial generator it'll come in a you know a cage uh, usually which makes it easy to carry but this is actually pretty easy to carry and it's, it's not particularly heavy, it's uh, quite manageable and you can fold the legs down so I can put this in the back of my car uh, no problem at all. Uh, if I can just show you too, um, the output from this machine is via a cable and two crocodile clips. It's not a very long cable, I didn't need it too long. Uh, and basically this comes out of the back and it's, uh, it's two wire. And there's your, your positive and your negative there that you can use to clamp onto whatever it is you're intending to power with this thing. You can also see on the back here there is a uh, breaker switch just for turning the uh, the power on and off. Uh, there should really be some kind of fuse on it as well, maybe a 50 amp fuse, 60 amp fuse, about that sort of size. So why would you want a generator like this? Well, first and foremost, charging batteries. And I've seen people uh, do the same thing with a, a normal uh, AC generator and a battery charger, but that's actually a really inefficient way uh, to charge batteries. So when you use a commercial AC generator, like one of these portable gasoline powered generators. Uh, the engine's generally spinning at either 3000 RPM or 3600 RPM and that's consuming gasoline at quite a reasonable rate but that's powering your little battery charger and normally these are sort of 10 amps, 15 amps, maybe 20 amps for a big one. Uh, so let's say 15, that seems to be fairly average. So you've got a, an engine running at 3600 RPM putting 15 amps of charge into your battery bank. With this particular setup, this engine is set to about uh, 1000 RPM, so it's running much slower. That means it's using a lot less gasoline or petrol, and it's also making a lot less noise, and it's also a lot less uh, wear on the engine. This runs much quieter than, uh, than it would be if it was in a normal generator setup. And not only that, the output of the motor is also a lot higher. Uh, this thing will put out, I reckon, about 40 amps. So you've got an engine spinning over at a third of the speed, but producing about three times the amps into the battery. Um, so you're going to get a lot more charge a lot quicker for a lot less fuel. And also, of course, you can connect it directly into an inverter, so you can get AC mains out of it again. Another cool feature of using a DC motor as your uh, power generation source is that you can actually use it to start the engine. It's a bit of a nice side side feature. If you connect this to a battery, which we'll do outside in a minute, um, initially with the engine not running, the power will come back into the motor and spin the motor and start the engine. And then as soon as the engine's running, it'll speed up 
and then the power will flow the other way from the motor back into the battery. It's all automatic. Uh, it's quite satisfying to watch. Let's just have a closer look at one of these dynamos. Well, motor I should say really. So I've got two of these, as I said, looking at about five pounds a piece. And there's quite a bit of other stuff like that to choose from. And they're, you know, pretty robust little uh, little motors, you know, they're, they're quite heavy. You've got an output shaft there of whatever that is, 19 mil or something, with a, an M8 thread there. Nice big heavy duty M6 mounting flanges. It weighs a lot. And there is a date on it. You can just see. Um, turn it around and see a bit better. It says 12th of November 1999. It's uh, made by FHP Motors and it's got a part number there, I think. If you come across some of these in a warehouse somewhere, I recommend them. Good little motors. I think we should go outside now and then give you a couple of demonstrations of this thing in use. As you can see, I've just hooked up this battery um, to the charging lead. So all I've got to do is throw this breaker switch and the remaining charge in the battery will spin the motor which will start the engine and then the engine will take over uh, and spin it to generate about 15 volts so that it then comes back in and, and charges the battery. Let's give you an example of that. show you now this uh, generator running a uh, like a tire air compressor it's a 12 volt one so I've got to start the engine manually I'm afraid choke on engine switch on and pull okay Next test, we're going to use an inverter directly on, no batteries or anything like that. Unfortunately, I've not got a large inverter to hand. I've got this 300 watt inverter that will do for the moment. Uh, so if I just connect that up, like this, uh, and to run on it, I've got a 200 watt um, sort of gas discharge lamp. It's like a hen light or something, but it's 200 watts anyway. So it's a, it's quite a bright one. I think when you see when I when I turn it on, and the dynamo takes the load of the lamp, um, it, you can hear the motor labouring a little bit, but really not very much. So it's got plenty more in it. Uh, for a much larger inverter and load if you needed it. Let's get this going. Uh, engine on, choke on, and pull. Okay. Let's try charging a vehicle battery. So I hope that demo has been useful to you. If you're thinking of making something similar yourself of course i'd love to hear from you in the comment section if you want to uh, ask any questions or, or make any comments or link to a video of something very similar that you've made uh, all of that's good it's all interesting so uh, do please uh, do that and uh, hope to see you again soon in another video thanks very much